All right, hey, it's Rob, and uh, I am out here on this chilly day with my doggy Diego, who's about to go get this ball. Here you go, buddy. And uh, Diego and I are out here to talk to you today about an important topic that I should have made a video about a long time ago. These are simply the names of the positions on a production sound department. Uh, believe it or not, it would seem kind of simple. You would think most people would know the basic jobs on the basic departments, especially if you are a director, you are a producer, you are trying to hire people like me. I'm a production sound mixer, and you're putting an ad on, you know, one of the uh, services out there where people find jobs, staff me up, Mandy, that sort of thing, or even on Facebook, etc. We'll just assume this is a low budget production. You don't really have a lot of money. You haven't had a lot of experience and you need somebody to do sound on your production. Now, I see so many people asking for things that don't exist, using the improper terms, saying things that are confusing, incorrect, could possibly get you the wrong kind of person who would show up and say, you didn't ask for that, you asked for one of these, and that's what I am. So we're gonna get this out of the way right now. If you are a person, having uh, a production going on soon that is in need of a sound professional. What you need is a sound mixer. That's it, that's what I do. You need a sound mixer. Now, maybe the term uh, was uh, more appropriate back in the day when we recorded on tape, not this kind of tape, but uh, we used to record on a device called a Nagra. That was the standard for many, many, many years, 30, 40 years, the standard was a Nagra, which was a portable battery powered, at most, two channel tape recorder, stereo, left and right. That was it. So you really were a sound mixer because you could still be mixing multiple sources. You could have eight actors. They could all be wearing wireless microphones. You could have two boom operators and on the bigger shows you often do you often will do a second boom it's just too challenging the way they shoot things now to have one person operate the boom and uh, you may need a second one so you could have 10 audio sources but back then like i said the most you had was two channels i did most of my matter of fact i did all of my career back then before we switch to what we use now, which is our file-based recorders that record on cards. I did all of my work uh, basically on a one-channel Nagra. That's it, one channel. So I really was a sound mixer back then because I had to mix as many sources as I had, which like I said, could be eight people and two boom ops. You would have 10 audio sources coming into a mixing board. And uh, you would mix them all down to one track. Now, what happened if person number six, the battery died on their wireless microphone pack or whatever? Well, you'd have to live with it because there would be no way really to separate out any of the audio. You gave them one track, it was mixed, hence you were a sound mixer, and that was that. That's all they got. Now, of course, today, things are a lot different. And this is what I show up with when I work. This is my audio bag. And uh, this is actually a uh, integrated uh, eight, although I think it can be even expanded to more now, eight channel file-based recorder, which records um, a two channel stereo mix of everything. It does that automatically from my settings on the mixer. And uh, I can record, like I said, eight different people talking at the same time who all have individual microphones on them, et cetera, et cetera. So much different deal here. Records to a, you know, records to a hard drive in there and records to a, a, two different SD cards uh, just for backup. Two of them can be set to record different types of files or the same files or whatever, but basically they're... So you have got a backup in case one of them gets corrupted. These are the wireless mic receivers on top. I'm not gonna go too much into the specifics just to let you know what we mean when we talk about a sound mixer. 
and what types of things they would be expected to bring to your production. Now, if I'm working on a reality show, you may also hear this one, bag mixer. And the bag is just what I showed you. It's an actual bag with the recording equipment in it. So you may see the term bag mixer. That's only specifically for uh, reality shows and larger reality shows. Like I have America's Got Talent Extreme, which I worked on coming out next week. And uh, I was a bag mixer on that show. Matter of fact, it wasn't even my own bag. On reality shows, a lot of times they will rent the equipment and you will just operate it. In any case, I'm sure when they hired me, they said they want a sound mixer or they said they want a, probably a bag mixer is more likely what they said. But I know what those two things are. They're pretty much interchangeable. Um, another thing you see that I've crossed out on here, we need an audio assistant. No, you don't. That's not what you're looking for. If you're looking for one person to record the audio on your short film or your YouTube proof of concept or your whatever indie commercial or some bigger project, whatever it is. Audio assistant is nothing. I mean, there could be a person called the audio assistant who would have a specific job on a certain kind of show, but uh, more likely than not, that's not what you want. Uh, sound grip, forget it. We've actually seen that out there. Not a thing. Um, OMB. OMB means one man band. That means if I hire a sound mixer, I also expect them to be the boom operator. That's fairly common on small shows. Although really the sound mixer should be asking those questions. If I get hired on a show and it's a narrative show where you would need a uh, separate boom operator to pick up dialogue from actors, I would say, do I get to hire a boom operator? And if the answer is no, what they're looking for is OMB, one man band. And I would say no, it's not work I'm interested in doing anymore. I've done it in the past. We've all done it in the past, but uh, these days, yeah, that's too much work for me. So uh, more often than not, on a lower budget thing, if you're asking for a sound mixer, you just probably assume that you'll also be the boom operator if it's a lower budget, lower paying job, but that's up to you, the sound mixer, to ask. Uh, finally, A1 and A2 on this sheet. That's a specific thing that would also be for a large production, like a stage type of show, uh, American Gladiator, or something where it's self-contained and large, a lot of moving pieces. And A1 would be a person who's operating a giant recording console, taking in all the signals, recording them to different devices, sending them to different places, et cetera, et cetera. And you can have someone who does that, like a master control board. And also people are run, running around individually with bags to get different things that are happening in different areas. If a show covers a wide amount of, uh, you know, space and uh, things are happening all over the place, you could have individual interviews happening with people recording them on bags and then the big show going on with all the events and things like that being recorded on a giant, you know, stationary console that an A1, uh, you know, still be a sound mixer, but they call it an A1 would be operating. A2 might be a bag mixer. A2 might be a person who's putting lobs and wires on people. So the A thing is those can get a little confusing and those do change a little bit. But for the most part, the point I want to get to here, and it's already been eight minutes rolling here, is uh, if you're looking for someone to do sound on your show, you're looking for a sound mixer. That's it. These days, we don't do a lot of mixing, actually. We record individual, what they call ISO, isolated tracks. So if I have four actors, each actor is going to be on track one, two, three, four, isolated, totally separate. And then if something happens and a battery dies, the whole thing isn't ruined. You just lost one of the four tracks. You'll still have to redo it anyway, but uh, you'll have all the other tracks will still be safe because they'll all be individually recorded as different files on your recorder. But uh, be that as it may, we're still called sound mixers. Position two is the boom operator on the show. We all know what the boom operator does. The boom operator takes a boom mic and puts it over your head. This thing here is called a Zeppelin. Actually, the housing underneath is called a Zeppelin. This is called, uh, well, some people call it a, a dead cat a furry, a fuzzy, a windsock. There's a lot of different names. But basically, this is what you use outside to capture dialogue. And the boom operator is pretty much the person who operates the boom. And that's it. 
in the olden days and on some shows a boom operator will still be responsible for putting wireless mics on actors as well we've kind of gotten away from that because uh it's just too much work to be the boom the boom operator these days like i said sometimes you need a second boom operator sometimes you need four people on a sound department because you need a dedicated second person who can uh you know jump in and be the boom operator the backup boom operator the additional boom operator i should say while the other person is responsible for putting wireless mics on the actors in any case if you want a second person on your sound team, it's going to be a boom operator if they are operating the boom. Simple enough. A lot of ads you will see, people will say, I need, sorry, I'm throwing the ball again. A lot of ads people will say, I need a boom operator. And uh, what they think they're asking for is in fact, where's my sign? What they think they're asking for in fact is what they really need, a sound mixer but they'll call it a boom operator. And again, they don't need a boom operator because a boom operator is not a person who normally brings the equipment to the set. So you get hired as a boom operator and you show up with your boom and they're like, where is your recorder? They didn't understand what the term boom operator meant. That's on them. But again, people you know, get confused between the different terms in the sound department. In any case, first thing you wanna ask for is a sound mixer. The sound mixer will probably ask, do I get a boom operator? And those are the two jobs, the two names. No other name should be used. And if they are, like I said, a lot of times, uh, you'll be using it inc you know, incorrectly. You'll say you need a boom op, but you really need a sound mixer. Number three, and these are on bigger productions, feature films, you know, uh, TV series that are on major networks. Uh, oh, wrong one. <laughs> you will get number three, which is the utility position, utility sound, utility sound technician. The utility is not an entry level position, which is why it's hard to work in the production sound department of a feature film or TV show, because there really is no entry level position anymore. Utility is a highly skilled position, like the other two positions, and their job has become, among many other things that a utility sound person will do, but their job has become putting these kind of wireless packs on actors so they can catch their dialogue no matter where they are and what they're doing and how the camera is shooting the show. And uh, the uh, amount of work you sometimes need to do that to deal with challenging wardrobes, tight fitting outfits, you know, uh, rustling clothes. I mean, there's, you know, you go into whole science on that and I'm not doing that in this video. Anyway, suffice to say, your utility sound technician is the person who's going to be wiring up the actors. After they wire up the actors, they may come in and be the second boom operator, the you know additional boom operator. But main responsibility, like I said, among many other things, among dealing with the equipment, dealing with the paperwork, sometimes is doing errands for the sound mixer, picking up batteries, or you know a hundred different things charging batteries, you know, at, at the uh, sound cart. A lot of times they have their own sound cart, which is called a follow cart, which is just what the utility sound is responsible for. But for the purposes of this video, we'll say the third person is basically the person who just wires up the actors. Why do you need a separate person? Because sometimes they're in their trailer hundreds of feet away from where the action is. And the boom operator needs to be planted on the set these days because things change really fast. They decide to add a camera, they decide to point something in a different direction, they decide to add an actor, move marks, I mean, any kind of thing could happen. And if I'm a boom operator, which I also work as a boom operator, and I'm off in the trailers, you know, putting wireless microphones on people, I'll have no idea what's happened on the set. I'll end up having to rush back to the set the last minute, throw the boom in the air, and then find out I'm in the shot, I didn't understand something, something has changed, so. Uh, it's gotten to the point where, you know, like I said, on bigger TV shows, feature films, like those sorts of things, um, there's no way a boom operator can really be freed up from the set to go do anything else. They have to just be planted there the whole time, at least sitting observing, if not rehearsing as they're rehearsing uh, to do the shot. Uh, finally, as a term of respect, don't call us a soundie. Just like you really shouldn't say, and I'm guilty of saying crafty. 
uh, scripty. I don't know that I say that, but other people do. It's kind of a demeaning term for people who are serious about their craft, you know, and uh, it's just, you know, let's have some respect for professionals that work on these shows. And don't call a person whose job it is to make sure that everything, you know, from the, the uh, glasses that are on the set that should be filled two inches to the top to which way someone's hair was combed and that kind of stuff. Don't call that person scripty. They're a script supervisor. All right. So those are the different jobs on the uh, film set, especially pertaining to sound mixers, boom operators, and sound utilities. Just use the right term and you'll get the right person. All right. Peace out.